This is Chandler Wallop of Boxing Social in association with Betfred, and today I'm delighted to be joined by Carlos Balderas. Uh, first and foremost, Carlos, how are you doing? I'm doing good, I'm doing good, bro. Thank you, thank you for asking. Yeah, no problem. Good to hear that you're doing well. Um, obviously, we've got this whole coronavirus going on at the moment. Uh, what's the situation like where you are? I've heard that it's obviously different in different states. Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, things are still in lockdown. You know, they still haven't remained open. Um, gyms are still closed, you know, barbershops. Uh, the only thing that's remaining open right now is banks, stuff like that. So people can get their money. But other than that, bro, everything's still remaining on lockdown. Um, I haven't gotten any news of when I'll be fighting, but I've been staying in shape. You know, the good thing is that my dad has his own boxing gym. And, you know, me and my brother have been staying in the gym. We've been working out. I'm going to get my, my workout in in a couple hours again, like in about five. So I just got my workout in this morning. I'm not overworking myself you know i'm just just staying in shape you know staying in shape yeah 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 i think i did see that somewhere how were uh, of you obviously having your own gym to work at how beneficial are you finding that obviously in these times some people don't have that um that available yeah yeah no i'm i'm great i'm thankful for it to be honest i'm grateful you know the only hard part right now is paying the, the, the rent you know now that there's no kids and stuff but mm. Um, you know, it, we're working things out, you know, we're working things out and it's a big, big, big helpful for big helpful thing for me and my brother, you know, because um there's a lot of people that are working out in their um their living rooms and their backyards and their garage, you know, it's just just doing whatever they can and it's uncomfortable. But you know, we're just having people like my sister and my mom go clean it like every couple of days, but only a, a handful of us are working out, you know. But actually, my brother actually got some sparring in yesterday, bro. Which is funny. I don't know if uh, people should be sparring right now, but he got some sparring in yesterday with some people from Bakersfield that came to train, which is about two hours, two hours away from where I live. They came down, some some professionals, and came to get some sparring. In. I mean, yeah, that, that's that's interesting to hear. Like, uh, so when do you see yourself uh, getting them back into sparring? Uh, maybe about, maybe about this, this coming month, not, not in June, but early July. Um, I'm already going to start hitting the bag and well, pretty much I've already started. Um, I'm going to be moving to Los Angeles. Um, and I'm going to be working probably with, uh, Buddy McGirt. I don't know if you're too familiar with him. Uh, yeah, he's a yeah. great trainer. Now he's training my boy right now, Adam Lopez. Um, so, you know, it'll be, I think that's a good, good, good spot for me. I'll, I'll be staying out there and Churchill management will be helping me out as well. Um, they'll be, you know, they'll be having my back out there because it's hard, you know, it's hard when you leave your house and you, you settle somewhere else and you have to pretty much make things work out there. You know, you got to worry about your food and all the expenses in camp, you know what I mean? Because you get paid, but we haven't got paid in these last freaking six months, you know? So it's hard right now, bro. But, you know, thank God I'm in a great position. And, man, I'm just looking forward to getting back. Uh, I think July I'm going to start my sparring and then my picking up my training heavier you know mm. yeah we um we actually recently interviewed buddy buddy McGurr, obviously hall of fame inductee very well known fighter former fighter and now trainer um what sort of uh, how how did you how does it come that you were two were going to start working together um well i've always liked his coaching you know i've always liked the way he's um instructed fighters um i don't know if you've seen a while back kovalev fought in your day um, and you see Buddy McGurk in his corner, he kind of, I just like the way he instructs his fighters, you know what I mean? I like the way he guides them. Um, as you can see, Adam Lopez, he's been doing a great job with him. Um, and I actually seen Adam in Las Vegas at the Tyson Fury and Deontay Wilder rematch a couple, of, like, maybe it was like a month after my fight. I, was, I wasn't I was even trying to be out, bro, to be honest. I had just lost, and it was way easier for me to freaking stay locked inside my room, but... I was I was over, you know what I mean? I let that pass and I went to Las Vegas to watch the fight and I ran into Adam and I was talking to him and I was telling him that I'd like to go and train with him in, in Los Angeles, that I'm looking forward to making my move out there and I think that's a great spot for me. There's a lot of sparring out there, you know, a bunch of bunch of better work, you know. Mm. So yeah, that's how it happened and then so Adam got me in contact with Buddy and I called him. He gave me his number and I talked to him. I've been talking to him here and there. But I'm pretty much just getting myself into better shape. That way, when I go out there, I'm in good shape, you know? Yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, yeah, June, June 9th is the 
the latest state that I've heard for a boxing return, and that's recently come from the Nevada State Athletic Commission, um, which are proven shows to go ahead, uh, but obviously without crowds. Um, just on that, really, like, what's your thoughts in general on shows behind closed doors? Do you feel it's too soon for fighting for boxing to be coming back? And would you personally be interested in fight behind closed doors? Um, yeah, yeah, I wouldn't mind fighting behind closed doors, to be honest. Um, shoot, I used to do it in high school all the time. <laughs> nah, but, um, uh, I think it'd be good. I, you know, it doesn't, as long as it'll be televised, you know, as long as it'll be televised, which I think it'll be really good. But, um, it'll be something different, I guess you can say. It'll be something different. And for me, I don't know if it'll be good or bad, to be honest. You know, like, coming off a loss. You know, a lot of people are thinking that the crowd is going to get to my head. But to be honest, it never does. But I guess it'll be good to shake off things and with no people. There. I don't know. I don't think it'll make a big difference. But I don't think it's too soon. I think things should already be on their way. Don't you think? I think it's already been like six months. I mean, unless things are getting worse, then maybe it is too early. But mm -hmm. things don't seem to be getting worse, you know. Things seem to be getting better, thank God. You know, I actually, I just had an uncle, to be honest, sorry to cut you off. I just had an uncle who was, um, he got sick with the coronavirus. Um, man, he was dying. He was doing not good. And he was in the hospital for about, I think, a couple of weeks, like maybe three weeks to like a month. He was pretty much on the ventilator. And thank God he pulled through, you know, so now he's home. He's doing better. And my family seems to have taken a deep breath now, you know. Yeah, it's scary, bro. Yes, yeah, I mean, yeah, sorry to hear that, but he's he's making he's making a good recovery now. Yeah, yeah, he's doing good. He's back home already. You know, he's back home eating, doing better. Okay, yeah, yeah, it's good to hear that, man. Um, yeah. yeah, just really whilst I've got you today, Carlos, I kind of wanted to, you know, it's your first time, obviously, on the channel. I want to sort of reflect yeah. on your career so far. Obviously, you know, you've been to the Olympics, you've been in World Series of Boxing, um, as well as, obviously, you know, making you've had your first 10 fights as a pro so what i wanted to do is obviously just go back to the start and just if you could just tell me how you got into boxing in the first place um i got into boxing because as a little kid me and my brother were always i have a brother who's just a year older than me um we were always getting into fights in elementary and we were getting suspended and my grandma and grandpa were always hitting us you know and they got tired of hitting us and i guess they wanted somebody else to hit us now so they took my dad and my uncles, they took us to the boxing gym, you know, so I don't know, maybe to get my mind off things. Maybe I had a lot of energy, but, you know, I, the first day I wasn't even supposed to be in the gym because I was too young. I remember the owner said that I was too young and he wanted me to come back about two years later. And I was about like eight, I was barely going to be eight years old. It was my first day walking into the gym, and, but his grandson was there and my dad said, oh, what about that kid? You know what I mean? What about that kid? And he said, you know, let's put him up to spar. And if, if your grandson beats my son, then we go and come back two years later. And if my son, you know, beats up your grandson, then you let us stay in train. And sure enough, man, before you know it, like, I'm over here getting geared up. My dad's in my ear, like, you better hit this kid, man. You better not let him hit you. Like, all my life, I've been getting told not to fight. Now I'm over here. They're encouraging me to fight, you know? And they're telling me that they're going to hit me if I don't let my hands go. So... I get in there, bro, and I start beating this kid up, bro. And this kid, like, he was maybe, like, two, three years older than me already. Had already been boxing for a longer time than me. Man, I made him cry. He started bleeding. And then the owner, after, like, the third round, they stopped it. And they asked my dad if I had already been boxing. And I just said, never box. You know, just a lot of street fights. Not, not crazy, crazy street fights, but I was fighting a little bit in the streets. And I used to put on the gloves a lot with my cousin, actually, like, in the backyard. And birthday parties, my cousin would always bring gloves and make us box and that's how my love for the sport started I grew up i used to um watch a lot of fernando vargas he was also an olympian and he became to become a world champion and he was now he's a very good friend of mine and man, he's been a, a motivating person for me ever since i was growing up and you can say he was one of like my first you can say like my first inspiration that i could remember from boxing you know i was like man when i grew up i want to be like fernando vargas started making my own path as I grew up, you know? So, yeah, that's how things went. Yeah, no, that's cool, man. That's cool. Hell, yeah.
Um, yeah, just obviously, uh, that's obviously how you got started into boxing and then moving into your amateurs, like you have a you know, huge amateur experience, like I've already mentioned. Uh, if you could just talk to me just a little bit about your amateur pedigree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I have about um, 200 and, 210 amateur fights, about 200 amateur fights. Um, I've traveled to the World Championships. Uh, you know, the Pan American Games, the Olympics, um, man, we were all over the place. I Probably the biggest international competition that I guess you could do is uh, the World Series of Boxing, besides the Olympics, you know? Um, the World Series of Boxing was something new to us, and man, it was hard. Uh, but I fought seven fights. The only fight that I lost was um, the headbutt that I received by Albert Selimov, um, who was a great fighter. You know, he's the only guy to have beaten Lomachenko. And man, I did, I did, a, I did a phenomenal, a phenomenal job in the in the World Series of Boxing. I think that's what helped me as a pro, kind of already establish my my style, don't you think? My my rhythm and stuff yeah. gave me like a big advantage. Yeah, I mean the World World Series Boxing, like the, it's mainly credited, isn't it? Obviously, for getting more of a feel to that pro format. Like, how beneficial do you feel like that was? Uh, yeah, your professional career. Man, very, very, very beneficial because what well, I remember, we didn't even usually pros start at four rounds, and because we had been doing five rounds in the World Series, we quickly went pro and turned to six. You know, we didn't even go down to four, so you can see right away like the experience that we gained from it. I faced a bunch of fighters, and we're the crazy thing about this is that we were fighting the World Series of Boxing professionally, five rounds, no headgear, every other week. You know, every other week fight one week and the craziest thing is that you had to travel here you have to go back home and you have to travel to fight i remember when i flew to azerbaijan right now here in california it's about to be 11 midday you know and 11 in the morning pretty much and over there it's going to be 11 at night so we got there about two days before competition you know i weighed in man by the next day the hour of the fight i was like super sleepy like i remember just getting my hands wrapped and I was like yawning and stuff like it was the worst but it was it was great experience overall and, and it really helped me catapult as, as a professional I felt like it helped me kind of uh get the first few fights like out the way with no problem you know hmm. rather than having all the nerves and stuff but yeah, I wish I could do the world series again to be honest it was fun yeah, and you you also uh, you went to the Olympics uh, in the Rio Games in 2016. That's really, the Olympics are really seen as like the pinnacle of of amateur yeah. boxing, you know. Um, like what was that sort of whole experience like? Yeah, um, the Olympics was a freaking crazy experience. Crazy experience. It was. I had a lot of family who went. You know, I actually qualified for the Olympics through the World Series of Boxing. I don't know if you're mm. familiar with that. So I qualified early. A lot of my family knew, so we were doing fundraisers and a bunch of stuff because I had, like, about 10 family members go out there, you know? And it was it was a great experience. My grandpa went out there with me, who at one time he had to pawn his watch so that I could have enough money to go to a boxing tournament. And fast forward, fast forward a few years later, like about a month after the Olympics, when I got home, I received a mail in the watch. You know, I guess all athletes received the watch in the mail, and I gave it to my grandpa, you know? It's crazy how things come around but beating the olympics was was um i guess you say it was a dream come true for all of us you know because ever since i was a kid ever i swear ever since i was a kid like at the age of eight seven eight nine my parents and my uncles would always tell me my grandparents would always tell me man you're gonna be an olympian one day and i would always say i swear to god like i was in second grade i remember putting behind my paper that i would be an olympian when the people were it was like a final project at the end of the graduation year, and your teacher says, what do you guys want to be when you grow up? A bunch of people were kissing ass, and we're like, I want to be a teacher, you know what I mean? And some people said they want to be a doctor, a police officer. I was like one of the very few, I kid you not. And I think um, she didn't even believe in me. I put that I wanted to be an Olympian or that I would be an Olympian, something like that. And I swear that was like in second or third grade. So when I qualified, a bunch of people were like, oh, you know, he wasn't supposed to qualify, this and this and that. You had your female and all of his people talking shit. But me, I had already been working for that my whole life, you know. I was, it's crazy what people can say, but yeah, the Olympics was a surreal experience, man. And 
um, it it just happened so fast though. You know, I, I didn't even believe that I was an Olympian until like maybe like two months after the Olympics was over. I was home. I woke up one morning and I was like, man, I'm an Olympian. Like, I was like, damn, I'm an Olympian. And that whole day I was on high. And But yeah, it was crazy. Yeah, and it, I, I can tell that like it means a lot to you and your family, like the way that you're talking about the fundraisers and the watch and everything. Yeah. Like, must have been must have been great for them to actually go out there and see you in action. Yeah, heck yeah, it was you know because it was a dream for pretty much all of us. It was my dad's dream, my grandpa's dream, and my dad would have my sisters sell chocolates for us like all day long during the summer, like they would be at the at the post office and the people from the post office here would kick them out. They'd be like, hey, you guys have to go, no soliciting here, whatever. But they would go stand outside of like grocery stores and sell chocolates just so we could have money to go to fundraisers, you know? And man, that was, um, I'm thankful that I have a, such a supportive family, you know, not just the team, but like my family. Because when I lost this last fight, I swear, the days after, well, Christmas was almost around the corner. You know, I lost December 21st and Christmas December 25th. But those days that were following after my fight, I swear, man, I had all kinds of people here at my house in the morning bringing food, bringing bread, you know, bringing tea, like praying over here in my house. All kinds of family was coming, you know. So, you know, we're a very united team and family. And I guess that's a big part of my my motivation, you know, coming from poverty. My grandparents coming from Mexico. Um, my, my, my mom and dad, when I was growing up as a kid, they were both incarcerated, you know, so me and my brother, we were, we grew up with my grandparents and, you know, of a lot of things inside of me and in my past that truthfully, truthfully, they could have held me back. Anything, uh, there's bigger things in my life that could have held me back. So this little loss right here, it's just a learning. It's just a bump in the road. You know what I mean? It's not something that's going to hold me back. You know what I mean? I've, I feel like I've been through much more than a loss, you know? And it's it was, overall, it was a learning experience, you know, because I'm going to be a better fighter after this. You know what I mean? I didn't receive no damage in the fight. I just got hit with a good shot. You know, it's just unfortunate that these things happen in boxing. You know, it's just a freaking, it's a crazy business. Yeah, we will um, we'll obviously come on to your professional career just in a little bit. Um, just to kind of still kind of stick around the, the amateurs and sort of your transition um for sure there was there was one thing that um that i did actually know, notice is that you actually legally changed your name to carlos with a k am i correct oh yeah yeah i did, I did. so yeah, I did. what was the um i mean i know the story but for the viewers watching like tell me the thought process behind that and why you decided to change it yeah um i just felt like the c was too basic you know what i mean i felt like the c was too basic and um like as a kid i swear I used to spar a bunch of these kids and I used to, I used to make a lot of these older kids cry and they used to always say, oh man, he's a killer. All oh, these kids are killer. So they just have, to, I don't know, one day it just came about somebody said, you should change your name for Carlos with a K, you know, K for killer. And then they just, it just started going like that and I changed it to K, you know what I mean? Change it so my dad legally changed it. <laughs> yeah. That's funny, man. At what point did you in your amateur career, did you sort of start to consider boxing as the thing that you wanted to do as a career? Um, maybe like when I, when I really started taking it serious, would you say? Mm -hmm. Man, man, it's crazy, you know, because I guess you can say when I started growing into it was maybe when I got into like my, like my high school age, you know? that's when I started like growing the mentality of becoming older, you know, because as a kid, truthfully, my dad was very, very strict on us. Like he disciplined us very hard, even to a point where you could say it kind of scarred us. I was like in second, third, fourth grade. And he would have me waking up before school, me and my brother before elementary to go run. Like we'd go running and we'd see like the school bus passing by and all the kids on the bus, like me and my brother were running. Like, we'd still have to come home, like, shower up and, like, you know what I mean? Like, well, rinse off more than anything. <laughs> Man, we're some dirty kids. But we had to rinse off, eat something small, and then jam, you know? We'd have to sometimes even eat our uh, food on the way to school, you know? But my dad was always very strict on us. He had us, like, training really, really hard at a very, very early age. Like, it's even as, like, when I was in junior high, I wanted to go out with friends and I'd be like, Dad, after school, can I go hang out? 
or can I go to the beach on Fridays? You know, not even in a weekday, at least on Friday. And he'd say, no, no, you have to be in the gym. Like my dad was very, very strict on us. So I guess you could say I was forced to take it serious, you know? <laughs> I was forced to take it serious at an early age. But when I grew up in about my high school age, when I started winning and I started actually traveling to like Kansas and then I started traveling to like Alabama, another little like I won the Junior Olympics, I won in Alabama, I won the Silver Gloves. Um, you know, I just started traveling to like Ohio, the National Parks. I started, that's when I grew up age and I started realizing like how hard it was to actually earn money, you know? Because in high school, I always wanted money and I was never able to get a job because I was always busy in competition. I always wanted. So when I started seeing how like my dad would struggle with the money and how when we would go eat sometimes, we, you know how when you go in in the morning for competition, then after that you you go eat. After you weigh in, we'd go eat, but my dad would never order anything to eat. And I would always be like, Dad, why don't you ever order anything to eat? And he'd say, oh, you know what I mean? Because I'm not hungry. And, like, I later found out that he was saving money, you know what I mean, for the week, you know what I mean? Because if you keep winning, you keep advancing. So that's when I started realizing, like, how hard it was to earn money. And I knew that I can do something with my life in this sport and then I can give back to my people. So, yeah, and I started tearing things up all of high school. I won on... Um, I won like maybe like 13, 14 national titles. I won, um, man, I won them all over the place, all over California and, and the United States. And it was really a fun experience, you know, but it was just frustrating to not be able to have a job, you know. That was, mm. I hated that the most. Obviously, uh, after the Olympics and when you were starting to look towards making your pro debut, uh, you know, you decided on Ring Stars, the promotions that was going to promote you. Uh, what prompted you to sign with them? What's up? Uh, so when you were looking to begin your pro career, yeah. um, what sort of prompted you to sign with Ringstar Promotions? You know, um, because I think Ringstar, um, when I met them, I think they were very honest people, uh, generous people. Um, you know, Richard has done stuff for me that people don't know about, and he's just been a big, helpful blessing to my family, you know, and, when we were out there in Brazil, you could say he helped take care of us, you know, and he was just doing stuff. And I didn't even, it's not that I, I didn't do it for that reason that he took care of us or anything. It's just, um, I believe he was like a man of his word. And, you know, when I talked to him, he told me he had a big plans for me and I trusted in him and I still do trust in him. And, you know what I mean? It's just, um, like I said, in this business, things can happen with one shot. It could just, but... I think Ringstar was a was a good stable for me, you know, to start off. I was the face of it. Um, I could have gone to, you know, Golden Boy because they offered me to sign. Um, made with the promotions. Um, who else was the top rank came to came to my city to come talk to I me? Mean, there was pretty much all of them. Um, but I just felt like uh, I just felt like Ringstar was a was a move for me at the time. How did you find the transition from amateur to pro? Like the style wise, yeah. Um, man, I don't know. I I feel like I've always had that style. I've never really been a person who like does pee patty punches, you know. Um, my uncle and my dad watched a lot of boxing as kids. You know, they watched a lot of boxing, and maybe that's where they got it from. You know what I mean? Their style, because I'm technically just a product of what my dad and my uncle have taught. You know what I mean? I mean, I've got skills and stuff, but I pretty much am what every, everybody has been seeing is what I've been taught, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and I think that they got that from watching a lot of boxing, a lot of them. Um, they've always had me watching fighters like Sugar Ray Leonard. Um, you know, I like Fernando Vargas, but I also like watching like Mike Tyson and stuff like that. And picking up the fundamentals, like my uncle always, always wanted me to watch Sugar Ray Leonard because he was an explosive, fast fighter. And that's pretty much the style that I've kind of always wanted to go after in a way like, explosive fast i can move i can bang if i need to which i think i've pretty much shown throughout my career that i i'm i gonna have speed i got pop you know what i mean and i can take a shot i can take a shot bro you know what i mean it's just in my last fight i was just um truthfully truthfully bro i never even wanted to get in this topic but i was just really dehydrated in my last fight to be honest i was super sucked up i don't know why my body wasn't responding to me but yeah you know what i mean this is a comeback soon yeah, like yeah, I, w I was just about to 
to touch on that really in the dehydration like was it, what sort of things do you think caused that like was it more the weight or no I, it was just um a bunch of overtraining you know i was overtraining myself i overtrained my body too much and that was because um my fights had fell off like the month before i was supposed to fight in the month of november i was already on weight and then they told me that i was it got changed and now i'm fighting to december so I was already on weight, bro. I was, I kid you not, they told me that I wasn't going to fight one week before the fight. And I was already on weight. So I pretty much just kept my weight really, really low. For the next month, I made the weight. And for some reason, my body just couldn't go up back up in weight. Um, it took me about a good, like, four weeks to put the weight back on, like, after the fight, you know? Usually, I go up in weight about four days after the fight, I'm already like 150 something, a couple of days after the fight. No, I'm like 147. I'm already like hitting 150 a couple of days after the fight. You know what I mean? Just to recover my muscles and my body. But I didn't even hit 150 to like maybe a couple of weeks after the fight, you know? I, it was just my body was just super dehydrated, bro. Have you watched the fight back or do you watch any of your fights back? Yeah, I watch, truthfully, um, I don't really watch a lot of my fights, to be honest. Even when I win, and I even, I swear to God, even when I get the KOs, I never am a person who, like, always replaying, replaying. But um, this last fight, yeah, I did watch it a little bit, but not too much, to be honest, because I just felt like that night, it wasn't me. You know what I mean? That was not me. If In my mind, I would have known that I was 100% before the fight and that in the fight, I did pretty much the best I could, which I did, you know what I mean? But it's just... A lot of things were rat, not working out that night. You know what I mean? That that night was just not me, bro, truthfully. And um, you know what I mean? I'm glad that I'm going to live another day. I'm healthy. Um, I didn't receive no no damage in the fight. You know, I just got hit with, with the dish shot. But, um, and you know what I mean? It's just a learning experience, bro. Yeah. Is it is it like important for you to get a rematch or are you sort of pushing it to the side and moving on to bigger and better things? Um, you know, I've gotten, I've talked to a lot of people and a, a lot of people have told me that they don't want me to get the rematch, that it's not worth it, that that guy's a nobody, you know what I mean? A lot of people do know that I'm still a better fighter, you know what I mean? Um, it was just not my night, like I said, but regardless, I believe I'm still a better fighter and everybody has told me that there's no reason for me to get the rematch that, for what, you know what I mean? Who is that guy? But I think I should get the, I want the rematch, to be honest, I just want to get it just to... More than anything, I think it's just because when I lost, the people use it as a reason to, like, you know, step on you. You know what I mean? They wanted to really bash on you. So I maybe it's for that reason alone that I just want to go smash that guy. But it's not even nothing personal. You know what I mean? It's just the business. But I do want to get that back, to be honest. I do want to fight him again. Um, I have plans of fighting him again. Um, I haven't told my team about it. Like, they know that I do want to fight him again. But... It's not going to be the first fight right away. I'm first going to get one fight in, see how things are working, see how things feel with Buddy, and then we'll see. We'll go from there. You're obviously competing in the lightweight division, which is, you know, a stacked division at the moment. You've got so many young talents like yourself coming through where you've got uh, Ryan Garcia, Devin Haney, Javonta Davis, uh, Tiafimo Lopez. Um, out of those four, like, Obviously, you've got Lomachenko, who's, you know, got two of the belts at the moment. Um, out of those four, though, those four young talents, who do you feel that will come out on top out of the four of those? Um, I see, It's funny because I'm actually a junior a lightweight. You know, I'm actually 130. Oh. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know where people keep getting it that I'm a lightweight, bro. Maybe it's, I don't know where, but I, I don't, but anyways, to answer to your question, um, I'd say Lomachenko. Um, Lomachenko is probably the top dog at lightweight right now. Um, Teofimo has been looking good, you know what I mean? I've sparred Teofimo um, a couple times, and he's a great fighter, you know what I mean? He's a great fighter, but I've also sparred Lomachenko, and I just believe he's, um, he's, you know, not trying to sound like a hater, you know what I mean? I just do think he's better. And I sparred with Lomachenko more, to be honest. I've sparred with him more than I've sparred with um, Teofimo, or than, um, but... I think uh, he's the top dog right now when at lightweight, yeah. And then, who else is champion at lightweight? It's Lomachenko. Yeah, so you got uh, Devin Haney with the WBC. Oh. Lopez with the IBF, yeah. Why did I think... Oh, that's true. Well, Devin Haney is a great fighter, you know what I mean? Devin Haney is a great fighter. And um, 
a lot of people are criticizing him because they think that he didn't um, win his bout, I guess. I don't know if it, was, if it was vacant or whatever, but you know what I mean? He's been putting in his work, and you know what I mean? Time is going to show if he deserves the bout or not, you know what I mean? So he's a good fighter, you know, but I think he's – um, I he's okay, you know what I mean? He's, he's a good fighter, but he's all right, you know what I mean? He's not that good, to be honest. Yeah, I mean, I guess the um, the sort of presumption that you're a lightweight kind of comes from that, like, you're, the name that pops up most with yours is Tiafimo Lopez, who's a lightweight. And like, mm-hmm. obviously, I know you made your, your pro debut at uh, Super Feather. Um, but yeah, like, where, just on that, where did that sort of, the beef with uh, Tiafimo Lopez, where does that stem from? Um, You know... You see, Teofimo started talking shit, to be honest. It was him and his pops who actually started. Um, him and his dad had started it because I had qualified for the Olympics in the division, in the lightweight division, which is the division that he wanted to go, you know what I mean? And when I qualified, they went and they started talking all kinds of shit, saying that I didn't deserve it, that I didn't deserve it. See, that's the thing about him, that he's so maybe stuck in his head or something that he thought I didn't deserve it, but how can he say that I didn't deserve it? You know what I mean? When I fought all these people in the World Series, I, I don't know if you knew how I actually qualified for the Olympics. I had cut my head with Albert Selimov. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you knew that. I had gotten like nine stitches. And I and the fight with Puerto Rico was two weeks later. I wasn't even supposed to fight, but I still risked fighting. I took the stitches off about five days later. And I just stayed pretty much in shape. And I fought against the Puerto Rican, knocked him out in two rounds. With the cut, bro, with the cut. And I still didn't even, um, I knocked him out in two rounds, and that's how I qualified for the Pan Americans and for the Olympics. So for these idiots to say that I didn't deserve to, to go to the Olympics, you know what I mean? It was disrespectful. It's kind of like what he's doing to Devin Haney, you know what I mean? Telling him that he doesn't deserve his belt. But, like, you know what I mean? He's always feeling like somebody doesn't deserve nothing. But, you know, that's where it all started, to be honest. And then we had a couple sparrings, and his dad, man, his dad is crazy. And him and my pops, they were not talking shit to each other or anything, but they, I guess you could say, had some tensions toward each other or whatever. But, uh, you know, that's pretty much where it started, you know what I mean? And then when we signed the pro, people were saying that they wanted, well, when we went to the Olympics, people were, because he qualified for Honduras, you know what I mean? He qualified for Honduras. Mm -hmm. Um, He was, I guess, um, because I don't know where who's from, his family's from over there, but. He went to the Olympics, bro, and everybody was already hyped. They're like, oh, okay, now we're about to see who, who's going to do better. And now we're about to fight each other because he was over, because he fought in the Olympic trials still, and he won the Olympic trials at lightweight just to be the second place, I guess, because just in case the first place gets hurt, everybody needs a replacement, you know? And But truthfully, nobody even went to the, nobody even went to the trials because they had already knew that I had qualified. You know what I mean? Only looked like about four people went. And so he won. He because he won that he felt like he needed to represent. But he went to the Olympics for Honduras. He lost the first day. You know what I mean? He got slapped around by France. And you know what I mean? That says it all. You know what I mean? And I went and I fought in Kazakhstan and I fought Japan. Then I lost to a Cuban. But man, that was a close fight. You know what I mean? And that's pretty much where things started. And then when we turned pro, I guess they kept talking shit. Um, they kept running their mouth, him and his dad. And I think things have not died down, but just, you know what I mean? They've just washed away a little bit. But who knows? I mean, there's, there's a lot of big names for me to fight at the lightweight division because I'm 130, but I'll eventually be moving up soon. Um, you know what I mean? I'll be moving up soon, yeah. Just just on the the 130 division, then like who who do you consider as the the top dog if you were, and how far do you feel you are away from competing at that level? At where at the lightweight or at the at the junior lightweight? At 130. At 130. Let's see who's champion right now. 130. You got who? Jamal Harry. Mm-hmm. And then you got uh, no. Berchel. Then you got who? I've been put on the spot there. <laughs> um, no, I mean, I'm trying to think too. I'm trying to think too. Who's it? Who's Chan Cruz? Who's got the WBA regular? Oh, for sure, for sure. Uh, and then there's another guy. You've got, you've got Valdez out there, but he hasn't got the. 
the belt, yeah. yeah um, so. I think at 130, still, I think Berchel, you can say, you know what I mean? But I heard Shakur is moving up to 132, and um, I think he's probably the best skill-wise, you know what I mean? Um, He has a crazy, crazy amount of experience, and Shakur pretty much helped me get ready for everything. He helped me get ready for the Pan Americans. He helped me get ready for Rio. He helped me get ready for... I went to Brazil two times, actually. And he helped me get ready for both times. And, um, yeah, bro. I say he's skill-wise, man. He's freaking... He's legit. Brilliant. Yeah. Uh, before I let you go, I just want to get your thoughts on a couple more, a couple of fights. Um, obviously, you know, you've mentioned before that you've sparred both Lomachenko and Tiafimo Lopez. So it'd be great to get your thoughts on their eventual clash if it does still go ahead after lockdown. It seemed to be done. Vasily Lomachenko versus Tiafimo Lopez. How do you see that fight going down? Um, Lomachenko versus Tiafimo Lopez. Like I said, I think Lomachenko is a better fighter. Um, you know what I mean? Uh, Teofimo is a strong fighter. You know, he's a strong, he's a good fighter. He's athletic. But I think Lomachenko's experience is just too much. You know what I mean? And I'm saying it because I've sparred, in, with, I've sparred with him a few times. And you just see it. You know what I mean? You just feel it. And I think Lomachenko should um, come away with the win. I can't say he'll stop him. Maybe, you know what I mean? Lomachenko has been frustrating everybody. and seems like nobody has been able to freaking figure it, figure it out. You know what I mean? Like like they've been saying, um, what were they saying about Mayweather? Nobody was able to figure out the <laughs> the code or something like that. What was it called? Oh, uh, yeah. the Wait, so for Mayweather, sorry? Yeah, for Mayweather, they couldn't figure out the... Um... I don't know. I know the, I was just thinking of the Matrix, but that's... Uh... What's called that case? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but they won't be able to figure out the matrix, pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. There was a there was another fight just up at lightweight, which uh, seemed to be going ahead, which was Ryan Garcia versus Jorge Linares. Um, how do you see that going? I think Linares as well. You know, I think Linares as well. Um, he has more experience, and um, he's. Ryan is more fresh, you know what I mean? So he has advantages in that area. But I think Linares' um, experience is going to be a bigger factor, you know what I mean? Um, he had a good outie last time with um, Carlos Morales, who gave Ryan pretty much a bunch of problems. Not a bunch of problems, but he did. You can you can tell he gave problems to Ryan. And you know what I mean? He went at it with Jorge. But I think um, – Ryan is a good fighter, you know what I mean? He's been looking better in his training with uh, Eddie Reynoso and them, but he's um more basic, you know what I mean? He's more basic, um, kind of relies on his one shot as well, but I think Linares is a better fighter overall. Uh, Fury Wilder free. Um, I think, you know, the general consensus over here in the UK is that, you know, we really want to see the, the Fury AJ, like, undisputed clash, um, but it seems that Fury Wilder 3 will go ahead and Joshua Kulev will go ahead. On Fury Wilder 3, do you, are you, do you have interest in seeing that fight after considering how one-sided it was? I know a lot of people feel like that. Yeah, um, eh, who knows? I think that people should give Deontay Wilder another chance. You know what I mean? Why not? Uh, he gave uh, Tyson Fury another shot. You know what I mean? And I think it, it'll be good for the sport of boxing. I think that Tyson Fury is still going to walk away with the win, but why not? You know what I mean? Why not let him prove himself? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, kind of like in my situation, when I lost, when I got dropped, a lot of people said that they felt that the referee should have stopped it the first time. But I felt like it was good that the referee let me get up and prove myself. You know what I mean? That was that was good for me, at least. And I'm glad that he at least gave me a chance to prove myself. Um. Yeah, there's a, there's a fight which... You know, which is we've wanted to see for I don't even know how long it's really been talked about. It's a fight, an all American clash between Errol Spence and Terence Crawford. Mm -hmm. uh, if that fight were to happen um, at some point, <laughs> how do you yeah. see that one going? Man, um, I think uh, Terence Crawford, I mean, not Terence Crawford, I think Errol Spence would, would take the win. I don't know why, I just feel like he's a dog. I'm not saying Terence is not, but um. With the crash, who knows how he's looking? Who knows how he's feeling? Who knows how he's shaking things off? Um, 
thank God he didn't have no broken bones, you know. But I still think it's going to be a big, uh, it's going to affect him in a way. But who knows how he'll look with Danny. But I'm still signing with Errol Spence, you know. I'm still signing with Errol Spence. I think he could still take the win. But, um, man, who knows? Errol Spence, you can't, you can't underestimate Errol Spence. I mean, Terrence Crawford, man. I got these fighters all mixed up. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. Obviously, those two uh you know, sort yeah. of in the pound-for-pound pound list or, you know, most pound-for-pound pound list. Who's your sort of pound-for-pound pound top three? Top three, I'd say um, Canelo, Errol Spence, and The Monster. Yeah, good choice. Pretty good. Pretty good. Okay. Well, Carlos, just before we wrap up, um, what would you like to say to everybody who will be tuning in to watch this interview? Yeah, you know what I mean? I just wanted to, um, first of all, tell them thank you for taking the time to watch the whole interview if they get to this part, you know, but um, that, you know, um, I just had a bump in the road, you know what I mean? I just had a bump in the road, and I'm good physically, mentally, and I'm ready to get back in the ring and pretty much um, not reconstruct my path to world title because I'm just on the same path to becoming a world champion, and I'll be world champion soon, you know what I mean? It's just a matter of time. Okay, well, Carlos Valderas, thank you very much for speaking to myself and Boxing Social, and hope to speak to you soon. All right, man. Take care, bro. Nice talking to you, bro.